Guys, this recipe is going to be for the garlic knots, and we're going to break it up over a few days. So here goes with the demonstration. Enjoy. Cut it up. So first of all, the first thing you want to do is get the water. I got some hot water here. So you want? I'm just talking to myself to pace it out. And you want one, two and a half cups of hot water. This is a very tepid water. Okay. Okay. So now we will add the yeast this is the yeast this is fresh yeast right here see that huh? Start. okay we're going to add two teaspoons of salt i mean yeast using the two teaspoon measuring thing you see here one teaspoon okay if you can see that so we want one Of that okay then sugar okay there's your sugar okay about two tablespoons of sugar Ooh, okay so at this point we will let that soak together for about five minutes all right mix it up a little okay So now what's going to happen here is that the yeast will eat the sugar and then it will become bubbly and you see it's going to bubble up really nice. Okay, so we'll let that stay right here. All right. So I'm going to now set this aside. Okay, you can see it's starting to bubble just a little bit. Okay. In, a, in about five ten minutes, this is going to be all bubbly. All right. Okay, we'll put that on the side for now. All right, and let's work. Always clean station. Make sure everything is clean. Okay, rag to the side. Nice area to work. So now let's get our flour. Okay, nice AP flour. It just means on purpose, but preferably. Um, bread flour which we use in the kitchen okay let me just all right so now we have one cup you can see here one cup okay so it's going to be two and a half cups of flour now we're also going to use this is called the bench scraper and this is used to level off flour okay you kind of get your cup and level it off so as you see here this is way too much flour, so I'm going to use this to scoop off as carefully as I can back in. So I have one cup of flour. Okay. Two. Don't worry if a little flour falls out because you're going to need that to knead anyway. Okay. And about one half cup. Okay. And that's that. In there. All right, so let's just clean up our area. Make sure everything is good. Okay. So this is a very good tool that you'll use a lot in pastry and baking, which is, it's got a taper that's not sharp and it will, you know, be used for cutting and stuff like that. All right. Yeah. So, now we're going to add some salt and sift this together. So the recipe calls for two teaspoons of salt, nice good kosher salt right here. Sprinkle that in. Okay. Now we're going to get our whisk. It's dirty. Okay, you can use any other whisk. Use this to sift if you don't have a sifter. Just flour it up, sift it nicely. Okay. This will aerate the flour, 
get it nice and mixed up. All right. Okay, guys. So now we'll take a look at our water sugar yeast mixture, and you can see how it's getting kind of cloudy. It's starting to bubble up, starting to form. Okay. So at this time you can see that the yeast has absorbed the sugar and now we're going to slowly add this to the flour mixture and we're going to mix it by hand, it's the best way, and then we're going to knead the dough before we add the olive oil, which is here. Good extra virgin olive oil gives it a nice velvetiness and a texture. Okay, so I'm going to pour this in and use my hands, it's the best way. Okay. Okay. So now we have the yeast, and the yeast is really nice. It's kind of absorbed the sugar. Okay, Peter, it's recording here now. All right, so we're gonna add this to the water, like a little well in the middle, and just mix it by hand. Okay, just fold it in, let it absorb, kind of twist the ball a little bit, get your hands underneath. Okay, kind of get that working. Okay, if it gets scraggly like that. You don't want to stretch it. You don't want to pull the dough apart. You just want to kind of press it in. Peter, come play with the baby. Okay. Like that. Okay, you see how it's coming apart from the sides? It's pretty much absorbing all the water. Okay. Put it together nice. Okay. Okay. Right, get all the little pieces, the scrags off your hands. Like that. All right, at this point, I'm going to add the extra virgin olive oil, okay, and fold it in. Okay, you see I'm folding it over, it's kind of coming together as a dough, okay, kind of fold it over, fold it over, fold it over, kind of wipe the sides down, get the rest of the flour off the bowl. You can do this on a table as well. Doesn't have to be in there, but I like to keep it a little clean. Okay. So at this point, you want to, you could keep folding it under like this, like you're doing like a little fresh mozzarella ball. You kind of pinch it underneath like this. To me, it's a little tacky. See, it's still sticking, so I'm going to put just a little bit more flour on there. You could do that. You don't have to measure, just eyeball it. But don't put too much because then it's going to lose its moisture. This dough is about like. 40% moisture. Just a little more flour. Okay. And we're good. So at this point, I'm going to knead it on a flat surface. Okay, I have it on the flat surface now. Take a little flour. And this is a trick that bakers use, and you kind of throw it across. Like this, spread it out. <laughs> Andy, I'm not talking to myself, I'm doing it. Okay, so now put a little more, a little more flour on top. Definitely always flour your hands well so it doesn't stick. And we're going to keep rolling. We'll do this for a while. Okay, I like to go over and under. Okay, get some more flour in there. Kind of like this, fold it over again. I always like doing like this because you can stretch the gluten and get it really nice. Okay. 
right here. There you go. Stretch it back like this. Fold it back in. And kind of bowl it out now. Okay. As you bowl it, kind of put it underneath like this. And you could throw it down if you want to get it really tender. Okay. Use one hand with the palm of your hand and try to do one of these things as you put pressure down. And you see, the more I do it, the more smoother it gets. See? The more you stretch, maybe like a little more flour, but throw it across. Okay? I mean, you can use a machine, but the first couple of times you gotta do it by hand. Okay? That's actually a good workout. Hi, Baba. Okay. okay. Need a little more. And I'm using this tinky with the bottom of my hand. So, get it really nice, okay? Get that. See, it's stretching, it's getting smoother out here. Still needs a little more flour, don't be afraid to use a little more flour. Okay. Pull it underneath like this. You can kind of pull it under and over, see like that, and then put it down, use this part of your hand. And like this. And this will make it circular motion. Okay, so it's pretty good right now. Okay, so at this point I'm gonna and the main thing that we use this for is to help scrape and clean our workstation. Okay, you see how it really cleans up everything? Really nice. Definitely always wipe down, clean your area. All right. So at this point, we're gonna let it proof for about two hours or so. Ideally, you wanna leave it overnight, okay? So I'm going to get some of my good extra virgin olive oil. Okay, I'll sprinkle some down here on the board, okay? Wipe this down good. Okay. And all the corners, the sides, okay. Now we're gonna rub the top with a little oil so it doesn't dry out. Rub it around, okay, very nice. Okay. Get some of the other oil over here. Make sure it's nice and firm. So now that we have it on the center, okay, we're going to wrap it. And let it sit for about two hours. That's dose. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap this. Okay. And another time this way. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave it now for about two hours or so, or preferably overnight. And then when we come back, we're gonna see how it doubled in size. Okay. Okay guys, so now you can see, I've made a circle here and you see how the double, um, the dough almost doubled in size and expanded. Okay, this is similar to our pizza dough recipe. And you can see the bubbles here while it's well fermented. Let me just take this off, now you see how much it grew. Okay. Right. So you see here, I bring this a little closer, and you can see all those the bubbling. You can see it really bounces back nice, nice airy dough. Okay, so we're gonna take this dough now and start forming the knots. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the um, garlic butter coating. Okay, on the day of baking, ideally with the pizza dough, you want to let it rest at least overnight, 24 hours to 72 hours, to get the best taste. In New York, that's where we have good dough because of the cold fermentation process, which I'm trying to show you guys today. Okay, so with that having been said, okay, I'm gonna put this aside, get some of my flour again, throw it across, okay. 
make sure I got everything well here. All right, I'm gonna just gently just take this off. I don't wanna, I want it to stay puffy, so I'm not gonna bash it down or anything like that, okay? I'm gonna take that same pan and I'm going to put a sill pad here, which is a silicone baking mat that's non-stick. So once I make the knots, I'm gonna put them directly on here and then I'm gonna put the coating on, okay? <coughs> All right, so we'll just put this side. Okay, begin here. Okay, so make sure you flour your fingers good. Let's stick. Put a little more flour on here. Okay. Like I said, we don't want to push this down too much because we want it to stay nice and soft. And you can see how nice and soft that dough is. Just from my fingers, pretty much just going in there like that okay so I just want to stretch it a little bit by hand and the best way to do that is just lightly putting it back and forth like a pizza dough and as I'm doing this you can actually see it expand what I don't want to do is push down if I push down I'm gonna kill all those air bubbles and all that nice flavor from the fermentation okay when you bake it it's gonna be nice so you want to try to get a nice even square piece like this okay Okay, then we're going to use the bench scraper again that we talked about. This is a good tool. It's also good for cutting dough. I mean, that's where it's based for. Definitely want to flour it up so it doesn't stick. All right, so now we're going to measure across like this. And then we're going to proceed to make knots that way. Okay. So you want to go like this. All right. And then across the way here, see they're nice and firm, uh, nice and puffy. I'm sorry. So you want to evenly make strips, okay? If you could use a pizza roller too, is good, okay? You know, or you could just dock it like this. You could use the same recipe, docking it, and just put it in the oven, and make a kind of cheesy bread. It's actually pretty good as well, okay? That's a little excess. Okay, so if you see here, we take one of these center pieces, and you can see kind of how the dough has risen here. It's nice and soft. So what you're going to do now, you're not going to stretch too much. You just want to do a simple knot. Okay, just put it right through like that. Give it a little tug, and then just place it down like so. Okay, I'm going to put it on our baking sheet. You don't have to put any fat on here or anything, because it's going to um, not stick to the silicone. So I'm going to assemble them on here. Okay, we're going to line the whole tray with these, and you can see a nice little knot, just like that. And then we're going to brush it with our butter, garlic, and herb mixture. It's going to bring out a lot of nice flavor. Kind of take it out a few times, and also brush it down. Again, rotate the pan. I think this bakes for about 15 minutes or so, but you want to always rotate the pan. Okay, so you can see me putting them down here. You want to space them apart a little bit, because they will grow. Okay. All right, I'll just give it a little tug and then let it come back together again, okay? All right, remember, don't stretch the dough out. Just lightly, just tuck it in to itself like that. Okay, just like that, nice and easy, okay? We'll do like about 12, all right? I'll show you one more and I'll just do the rest on my own, okay? You could even let these out to proof a little more, and they'll expand as well. They'll rise up a little more, okay? Okay, so now we're going to start prepping the stuff for the uh, garlic butter coating, okay? This is a nice, very flavorful um, coating that you're going to brush onto the garlic knots. You're going to brush it liberally, and then maybe take it out once or twice. Brush it again as it's baking. You want to take it and turn it. In your oven depending if you have a convection or not give it a turn every five minutes or so the baking time is about maybe 10 15 minutes okay at about two, 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 what's my recipe say here uh, 400 degrees convection on okay if this is a pizzeria pizza ovens get to five six hundred seven hundred degrees and it'll take like a minute or two but I'm gonna prep my ingredients now for the coating okay so I'm gonna get my mise en place together, okay? 
and put the things where I need them to be. Okay, so you definitely need about four cloves of garlic. Okay, so get that here. Put another one for good luck. I mean, it is garlic knots. If you have garlic oil, you could use that. That's another lesson in itself. But I'll show you real quick. Go to garlic oil, I have a little bit left. You see, it's just roasted garlic. All the cloves are pretty much gone because we use this for a lot of stuff, but this was full with garlic cloves. And you pretty much roast, you can see they're a little brown, they're roasted garlic in the oil. And it gives a really nice flavor. But the, if you can smell and taste this garlic oil, it's very, very strong. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this as well. And to make that, all you gotta do is just cover the garlic cloves with a little bit of olive oil in the, um, and put them in the oven, like 350. Let them bake about an hour and a half or two hours until they get nice and golden brown, let it rest, and you're good to go. You could throw in like some rosemary, some other herbs and stuff like that. So, as we learn to hold a knife, this is one of my knives, this is a carbon steel one. And we, the bolster is here, as we remember, so you want to pinch and hold. And you see how I'm holding like this so I can get that rocking motion, okay? But we're going to do garlic. Actually, you know what, I will do the parsley first. So this is some nice beautiful flat leaf Italian parsley. We're not going to need all of it, so I'm just going to take about what I think I need, okay? But I want to separate the stems. I don't want the stems, okay? So you're going to pick the leaves off, and if we had like a stock pot or something like that, we would save these for the stock pot. This gives a lot of flavor to the parsley stems, okay? So definitely, look, all these big guys, they're very flavorful, but you don't want that, okay? So we're going to mince this up, <clears throat> remember the mince is very fine. Okay, the finest cut it is, okay. Just make sure I work clean. Just look, run through these a little bit, get rid of these stems. You just want nice parsley flavor. If you get a couple like this, it's from the supermarket, it wasn't too hot. So just discard the um, other ones that are not um, good. All right, so we have our stuff here. So now, with parsley, or any herb like this, you want to kind of bunch it up. And as you can see, I'm trying, I'm putting it together, like boiling it up. And I'm gonna take like my finger, like that claw method, and pinch and hold. And I'm going to just start going slowly back and forth. And like I said, speed comes with experience. Okay, and then eventually you get like that, and you get. But you don't have to work up to that speed right now. That comes with experience. So we're just gonna mince this up, okay? And like again, you don't have to, I'm just going a moderate pace, I can say like this, but you could get two, two knives and kind of do a drum roll thing like this and you get it minced up much more faster, especially if you're doing bunches and bunches of parsley. But also, if you recall, we definitely washed and dried this nicely. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to check and see there's no huge chunks. Okay, so parsley kind of makes a mess, so we want to use our bench scraper. And use that to gather up everything you see. This thing is not just for a flower, but it's really good for clearing off your board, getting the ingredients all to one spot. So I'm just gonna move this guy over here as we get our garlic in. Okay, so we got a nice little mince on that. Okay. okay. All right. So now let's go to the garlic, okay? Let me just clean this down a little bit. Okay. All right. Always stay clean, guys. Work clean. It's much part of good mise en place. All right. So now we're not gonna finally mince this. We're gonna just do it. Give it a quick smash and just mince. So think of something you hate and just give it a smash. All right. That's easy and it'll help start the process. Okay. Uh, taxes. All right. Okay, just give it another smash. Okay, you want to use the side of the knife here? You just give it a good pound, 
and then we'll continue to then we'll start to mince it just run your knife through it nice and easy so like I said before today you want this to be nice and fine you don't want huge chunks you want that flavor to get into your food but you don't want these giant chunks of garlic so you want to make sure that this is nice and fine like a mince okay make sure you get the pieces off the knife just carefully stroke them down okay. so I'm chopping this stuff up I'm trying to ballpark how much it is like we know that this is foreclosed but I'm gonna measure my mince of parsley and then I'm gonna use some for garnish as well okay I'm gonna also garnish with some Parmesan cheese some fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano okay bring this dish together okay, okay put this right here all right okay so now guys we're gonna assemble our um, coating that we're gonna brush on these beautiful uh, knots and as you can see they kind of got a little more puffy as they've been sitting out here proofing a little more you see i'm pushing it down so that's also good all right so we need five tablespoons of butter okay if you see a stick of butter like this a regular house stick butter salted you see these lines here each line is a tablespoon okay so we have one two three four five so then we'll cut it right there all right and then we will get our bowl pot a little i got a little nice cute little teflon pot here we're just going to throw everything in here and let it melt and let the flavors get together real nice in one pot we're not going to have to like mix and mix and mix just once it's melted it's good and we're going to coat it because it will bake and cook even more in the oven so let's get the rest of our mise en place together inside this bowl okay so i like some heat to this so we put one teaspoon of the crushed red pepper flakes trusty costco flakes almost out a nice teaspoon and i don't make it too spicy because my kids are going to eat these too i don't want to burn their butts okay a little salt okay one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil i'm going to eye this but you measure because i know what i'm doing <laughs> so that's what they tell me okay um then the parsley that we chopped here this nice parsley okay i'm going to it says a quarter cup so a quarter cup basically is about four tablespoons which we got here so we'll get into measurements soon so one two three four about and i want to save some actually i have more so i'm going to save chop a little more and use that for garnish okay so i think we have everything in there and then just a bit a teaspoon of salt i'm just going to pinch a little teaspoon in there and we're going to garnish and sprinkle some pecorino i mean some uh grated parmesan on top when it's done okay you don't put too much now because it's also going to be too salty all right so we have everything in here we have our oil our butter our parsley a pinch of salt what are we missing the garlic yes the most important thing we can't do it without the garlic all right so let's get all this garlic here and boom right in there all right so we got him in here everything's ready to go okay i'm gonna wipe this down but before i do that i just want to show you guys this brush i have you want a nice fine brush definitely made with some kind of a um nylon material you don't want to use paint brushes or anything that has like natural hair because that will come out and that's actually a violation nowadays in restaurants anyway but this one has a little nook on the side i got this in a japanese market in new jersey and it's cool because you see how it stays to the side so when you're brushing you just let it hook on so that's really cool you could find one like that in the online or on amazon they have everything all right so i'm gonna put this on the stove and let it melt and then i'm gonna brush my um what do you call it my beautiful little knots okay so over medium high heat we're just gonna let this melt and you can see it's already starting to melt a little bit down here and we're just going to mix this around i don't want to waste and dirty another spoon or something like that i'm just gonna let it melt and just and once it's melted, I'm going to brush it on the garlic knots. All right, guys. I'm, the the uh, 
I got the mixture finished here. You see it's nice, it smells very lovely. And you got everything nice and melted. This is good just to toss over some shrimp and just saute it and it's very good. So we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna take some of the stuff. You don't wanna just get the liquid. You wanna try to scoop up some stuff and just gently just pat it around, get in on the sides. Well, I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells amazing, okay? Okay, give it a nice pat around, get on the sides. Mix it up a little bit so the stuff doesn't settle. Okay. Very nice, make sure you get on the sides underneath, all that good stuff. And like I said, I'm gonna let this cook five minutes, turn it around in my oven, brush it again, another five minutes, brush it again. You know, it's about 10 to 15 minutes, you can be the judge of that. Oh my God, this smells terrific. Sorry to do this to you guys. I know you want to probably eat this. I'm sorry. Okay. So, and then I'm going to show you how to simply plate this, or just if you had some marinara sauce. I have this lamb ragu that I made the other day with fresh lamb and allspice, and it's going to go underneath and garnish it with some more cheese. You could use other cheeses. You could play around with this. You could make some dessert ones with some cinnamon and some powdered sugar. So, these guys look pretty good. So... Off to the oven we go. Okay, so I took these guys out after five minutes. I'm gonna brush them again. Okay, give them a little more coating. You see how they puffed up nicely. Don't push down, you don't wanna degas or all that beautiful air that's been puffing up. You just wanna like, kinda like drizzle this on a little bit, just kinda dab it, you know, dabbing, and then put it on there. All right. It's a little easy. You don't want to, like I said, you don't want to press down too hard and get all that nice air and all those nice little air pockets and crust that's forming. Okay. All right. All right. Let's put this bad boy back in for another five. All right. So these guys are fresh out of the oven. Okay. I took them out two, three times. I brushed them over. You see, they're looking very nice. They have a nice brown crust on them. You see how beautiful they are. And now that the garlic is starting to burn, you don't want to keep it in too much because some of those garlic bits will get a little burnt, all right? You can go around again, give it another brush if you like. But right now it's got a lot of flavor in there, okay? And this mixture here, you could save it if it looks like it's too thick because, hold on, alarm, 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 okay? You could always add some more oil and use this for something else. You could throw it in a pan, fry it up with some leftover noodles or pasta for a quick meal. Okay, especially if you're dorming or something, this is something really easy. You could just throw it together, okay? Just put some more of that on there. All right, these things are beautiful, okay? Then I gotta take a little bit of my nice Parmesan. Just sprinkle every little one with a bit. Some pizzerias like to toss it around, but I like to just do it individually. You just give it a nice, don't go too high with this one. Other seasonings you want to do high. This one you want to get close. You don't want to waste, you know, if you go like this, you're wasting most of the cheese on the pan. So you want to go close, you know. That's why we don't put too much salt in that coating because the Parmigiano is a bit salty on itself, okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you a quick plating. I mean, most garlic nuts you just are like street food. You just carry and go. But if you want to plate it up real nice, it's good with some sauce. I have some leftover um, lamb bolognese that I'm going to put with this. Okay, guys, so I got my plate here. I'm just going to take the bolognese. You know, I got some parsley here. I'm going to garnish with some parsley. A little more cheese. Maybe a few nice sprigs of parsley as well. Okay, I got my bolognese. You know, these are the standard restaurant container. So I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle. You could do this with marinara sauce. Just a little right there. Okay, this is a really nice chunky ragu. Oh. Okay, I just wanna just go around a circular motion, put that down nicely. Okay. Now, also before these things here, they look really nice and golden underneath. You don't want it too black and brown, and you see they didn't stick as well. Also, one side note, if you don't have these silpats, you can buy them on Amazon, they're very cheap. This one is not the official brand silpat, but it was very cheap. Email me for the link. I could send you one. 
But if you don't have a seal pad, just spray it with some Pam, a little aluminum foil or some paper or parchment paper. Don't use wax paper, just parchment. Okay. All right, so take a few, take one of these big guys right here, put them right in the middle like that. We like to go for some height with some of these. Let's see, this guy here looks pretty good. And we'll just arrange it like that, like so. All right, maybe a little bit more Parmigiano on top. You always want to keep the rims clean, so you want to use a side towel and clean, clean that off. Okay, a little bit more parsley just on top. Again, maybe inside the rim a little bit. Never, never, I hate when I see dry seasonings on the rim. You want to keep the rims clean, and if you're a server, definitely serve like this. You never put your thumbs or your thumb in the plate itself, okay? Maybe a nice little sprig or two with some fresh parsley inside there, okay? I have a little more of my good extra virgin olive oil. Maybe you want to drizzle a little around like that, okay? And that's pretty much you have it. This is like a nice version of garlic knots. You could pretty much do it with, you know, any sauce and leftover sauce. If you have a marinara, it's nice to just dip it. You know, you don't have to be too frou-frou. I just want to show you guys some plating methods. And always when you, you know, holding a plate, you always hold it like this. You don't stack them all the way up your arm, especially if it's a proper restaurant. It's not a greasy spoon. Okay, so just a simple plating. You know, if you have some of that garlic oil, if you have something else, but you don't want to overdo it. So, you know, you could charge like five bucks for this or less. All right, so um, enjoy. I hope you have fun doing this recipe. It's very similar to the pizza dough recipe. So if you get this dough down nicely, okay, just before I finish this video, I just want to cut one open. It's a nice big one here. And let's see what it looks like on the inside. And you can hear that's a sign of good fermentation. It bubbled up. The air pockets are nice and full. And then, oh, look at that. That's what you want to see, guys. You want to see those nice bubbles, okay? You see it's nice and fresh out of the oven. It's steamy. You could also take this guy and just, just dip him in here in that butter, olive, and oil, parsley, and garlic. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.